right. What are you drinking now? Uh, I got a coffee in one hand and a giant water in the other. Oh, God. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> we're here alive. We got the same thing. <laughs> oh, we're on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so here we go we are let's cut the sound there so we can not hear ourselves here for a minute um all right well guys welcome to our second week of taboo tuesday um man we are glad you are here pastor israel with us and um it is also if you go to victory church it is also food talk so if you have a wife or daughter or mother in the house, uh, man, send her over to VictoryATL.com to watch all that and to um, jump in with the, the fun. We have all of our campus pastors, uh, all of our female campus pastors and senior pastors are on there leading that tonight. And uh, Israel and I were just talking about the fact that uh, we didn't even realize, uh, you know, there was Taco Tuesday as well. So, um, while True Talk is having the home edition, we were this close to having the bathroom edition, but uh, <laughs> but, but we went ahead and made some adjustments. Uh, so we are we are glad you guys are here. Last week we were talking a lot about shame. Um, this week we're going to be talking about kind of just behaviors that what drives you towards unwanted behavior, and um, uh, you know we're going to give you guys a few minutes to just jump in with us as we're getting going. Um, I realized that you know. Some guys are going to come back and watch this later on. We know fusion is happening for our young adults. We know, um, you know, all this different stuff is going on. So we don't want to take you away from that. But Israel, man, how's your week going? What's going on with you right now, man? Man, it's great. I'm, I'm in the throes of, of uh, teaching my kids, um, you know, turning my house into a school. Uh, and so, so far, uh, we got uh, two kids in detention, and uh, Wait, one of the teachers is sleeping with the other teacher. So, I guess I guess that's what that is right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't know how many I've lost track of how many times my kids have had to go to the principal's office. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, but for us anyway, we're getting down to like the last week of, of school here, so we're excited. Uh, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so we are, you know, we're just trying to push through and finish well. That's 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 kind of where we're at right now. But um, yeah, next Wednesday, right? Is it next Wednesday? Next Wednesday, I think is a is officially if you're in Gwinnett County here in Georgia, I think that's yeah. that's when it is officially for us. Uh, man, our, our kids go to the Victory Christian School, um, and they're actually done with classes this Friday. So, man, we are stoked about that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, guys, the reason why we call this Taboo Tuesday is we kind of want to, you know, we're, we're wanting to have conversations about the things that maybe you would not normally talk about. Um, we're, we want there to be a safe place uh, where you can come, and this is not a sermon. It's not a message. Uh, we're going to tease each other, everybody around. You know, if you, get on, if you get on and start commenting, we'll probably go after you, too. But, uh, <laughs> but we're really Honestly, we just want to talk about the, the things that men are going through, the things that men are dealing with, and um, and like be honest about it. Not some just religious surface level answer, but we really want to talk about what is it that drives your behavior? What is it that makes you feel the way you, the way you do, or makes you respond the way you do? Um, you know, in in the heart of true talk, we almost call this guy gab or or testy talk or something like that. But then we thought that you know <laughs> that might not. Maybe that wouldn't be a good on the flyer. So we just decided, uh, you know, we'll just stick with uh, Taboo Tuesday. But we want to help kill the taboo in your life is really what it comes down yeah. to. So um, we're wanting to go after um, the very heart of it. So as you and I were talking earlier today, and let's just dive right into it, man. Um, sure. You know, we were, we were basically saying in times like this, people are trying to escape. They're looking for yeah. anything they can. So, so what is it that – drives men towards let's just let's just say one of the most common ones um that we don't talk about nearly enough in church is what drives men towards pornography uh yeah as an escape as a bailout you know i think um interestingly enough the association between there is an association between lack of purpose and pornography mm -hmm. and um and really what i mean by lack of purpose i'm going to kind of describe it with a few things 
I think it's, we, we lose vision for ourselves, like where we're going, where we're headed. Um, what's our aim? What's our goal right now in life? I think we forget about that. Completely. Yeah. And, and also under that, I think another word for um, like lack of purpose, a, a good word that matches that is futility. Um, I, don't, I don't think we talk about that word enough, but futility is basically uh, like this. It's this idea that everything a man attempts to do in his life will eventually be marked with difficulty, pain, and meaningless. Like, like think about this. Futility is, is no matter how hard you work at something, right? No matter how hard you labor at something, that it's, it will return fruitless and meaningless. Like, there'll be no purpose to it. And if you think about, like, all the major tasks you've risked to accomplish, there's always been that, that 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 place that point where on, you're on the cusp of quitting and before you quit the reason why you quit is because you hear that little white lie that says it's all going to burn up none of this is going to work it's all going to just go away just like that and so i really think that 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 um that 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 threat of loss we don't know what to do with that and i think that we we escape from that that escape, that meaningless, that fear of working hard at something and then having it ret return without, without it filling our, our sense of purpose and, and without it filling our sense of accomplishment. Um, that fear in and of itself causes us to back out or causes us to run to something. I mean, we've said this before a thousand times. Um, nothing hurts when you're winning. Yeah. And what drives us to pornography? What drives us to any bus? What drives us to anything that that allows us to escape. Um, it's pain. And there is no pain like the pain of losing. And futility is like this overarching thing that says, in the end, all your hard work is going to lead you to loss. And I think when we think about it, we, we, we all struggle with that. Well, I think, um... You know, I, I've said this a lot in the men's environments that basically you're, you're human flesh. Your flesh will always look for ways to make things more comfortable for yourself. And so yeah. to your point, so however can I avoid whatever suffering, discomfort, boredom, failure, embarrassment, uh, rejection, whatever the thing is, you know, it's very, very, very simple. Bad feeling, me don't like. <laughs> yeah. how, how can I make it go away? How can I numb it? You know, and yeah. so... Some people it's work, some people it's alcohol or drugs or whatever else, um, you know, but the one that seems to be, you know, we talked about this last week, the one that causes the most shame, the one that yeah. strikes the very core is, is, is sexual sin and, um, mm -hmm. or, or sexual addiction or sexual brokenness. Yeah. So uh, you were sharing some, man, what was the statistic you were sharing with me earlier? Oh yeah, so, so basically like if utility is an issue, and which is basically the, this looming dread of inevitable loss. Let's call it that. Yeah. This looming dread of inevitable loss. In that context, this statistic is, is like really, really crazy. But like, so in the 2017 NBA finals, um, and this, this data was actually pulled by a pornography website. I won't say what it was, but they pulled this information. And basically what it said is this, is that in game five, okay, and it was Golden State and game five, um, it was interesting, but as they were winning, Okay, pornography decreased by 21% in the Bay Area. Wow. Okay, well, well, on the other side, the team that lost, which was, and I'm not hating, but Cleveland, yeah. their pornography increased by over 34%. Wow. And so what does that tell you? Oh, it wow. tells you that this looming <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> it, it tells you that this looming dread of inevitable loss is so painful that it drives us to pornography. And so that's the thing about like pornography or not just pornography. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it baseline. What if, what if it's just eating ice cream? What if it's just sitting in front of Netflix and binge watching yeah. the entire evening on a show? Um, what if it's just watching TV, or what if it's just scrolling through social media? Here's the thing about, about those types of things, is that 
the reason why it's so addictive and the reason why it's so alluring is because it gives you the sense of accomplishment, especially pornography. It gives you the sense of victory and the false sense of reward without having to put any relational investment, without working, without putting, putting yourself at a, in a vulnerable position, without risking something. All you have to do to receive that false sense of reward or victory is to simply consume yeah. and sit there. That's all you have to do to get a sense of, even when it comes to watching sports, I know I'm gonna touch on something here. I love watching sports, I think it's a great thing, but the reality is this, is that you're watching someone else's victory, but you haven't put any physical effort into that particular game. Yeah. So what you're doing, like pornography or anything else, I'm not saying that sports is bad, I love sports, I think it's great, don't hear me wrong, but what I'm saying is, is that you're sitting on the sideline um, being a voyeur to someone else's victory. Yeah. Well, I mean, and so we'll, we'll settle for that as opposed to dreading and sitting under the looming fear of inevitable loss. You know, with women, it's, it's romance novels or fantasy books. Or Absolutely. It's, Chat it's, rooms. Yeah, it's basically, um, but to go to your, you know, to your point, it doesn't require anything of you. It doesn't require, I don't have to invest in any relationship um, for those of you that are like super introverts right now, there may be a sense of like, Hey, you don't want to go back to social integration because you, because it's it, for a lot of people, it causes stress and anxiety of having to put yourself out there and interact with people. And the easiest thing to do in some ways for some people is just to completely uh, retract and, and pull away. And so that's, that can be sports, video games, pornography, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and so kind of the, you know, the, the enemy of that would be coming out of isolation and getting in groups and getting in community. And yeah. so, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, how do we help more men get into community? Because so many of us, we just, we just wing it alone. And if we're in pain or we're losing, we just kind of feel like, well, I guess this is what we're, I guess this yeah. is a lot of life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think what we have to remember when it comes to groups, the thing we have to remember is this, is that it's in our nature it's in our nature. So the best things that can happen to us can happen to us when the lights are off and the doors are closed. Mm. But also the worst things that we can do happen when the lights are off and the doors are closed. And so right now with, with COVID-19, there's a lot of lights off and a lot of doors closed. Yeah, yeah. And so we find ourselves with, with no one looking, with no one watching, we find ourselves defaulting to old patterns or picking up new habits to kind of soothe the pain of, of what we don't know if we're going to come out of this okay. Like, what, what is the outcome of this? There is no outcome. People are worried about their jobs. I mean, right now, we are this close to loss. Yeah. We, the inevitable loss of our, our finances, what's going to happen next month? When's the next time I'm going to be able to see my family? When can I take a trip? You know? Um, all of those things. I mean, we're this close to inevitable loss, and so I think we're just trying to take advantage. So, how do we how do we handle that? Um, I, I think the best way is for us, and, and this is going to sound kind of cliche, but I, I think it's it's valuable. It's it's having real, honest, authentic relationships where these people can actually people in your life that can cheer you on and remind you of what your purpose is. To, to state over you, to almost like to declare over you and remind you that the hard work you're putting in right now is going to reap good fruit. It's not fruitless. That your work is not futile. Like you need that. I mean, I'll tell you this. You get a guy who's working in his corner office. He has never seen before. And this guy labors and labors and labors. And one day the VIP, the, like the, like the vice president, the VP, the executive, whatever, the executive chief, like he comes by, puts his hand on your shoulder and he says, hey man, I just want to let you know, man, like I see you, dude. Good work. And he just walks away and you're like, oh, and then all of a sudden your, your back tightens and you posture up and then boom, now you can push another eight hours, no problem. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you're seen, you're told and reminded that all your hard work is going someplace. And so what we're doing is I think we're, there's, there's, there's some form of disconnection. And I think that men do this well. We can still be around guys yeah. and still be disconnected because there's no emotional investment into it. We're, we're kind of using, I don't know, I hate to say this, but 
like the term accountability. I think that we kind of churchified that. I think that we kind of religified that that yeah. statement, and we 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 demeaned it to this to this checkoff, like this box. We're like, all right, I'm in a group, I show up, and then you're on the Zoom meeting, and then you know you're. I don't know, you're, you're, you're checking your Facebook while you got your camera on Zoom or you're doing the dishes and you're not really engaged. Like you're, you're completely disconnected. Or maybe even before this, you're just showing up routinely because this is what you do. But yeah. your heart is miles away. Like your heart is still at home on the sofa, but your body is present with, with the guys. And that's not going to work. That's not true accountability. I mean, that's for robots and apps on your phone. I mean, that's not something that a human can do. And what you need is real accountability where people can actually speak into your life, in my opinion, and know you. Yeah. Like really, really, really know you. Well, I have no idea how many men in the church even have any form of accountability in their life. Most men, I, you know, I don't think make themselves accountable to anyone. And so um, there's that side of the spectrum. And then on the flip side, there's the guys who've been in church forever who, you know, they check every box they're supposed to, like you said. And um, I was talking about, the danger with that, um, you know, I, I used to be in the security business for a long time, is how even you, you can have accountability and become apathetic with it. So, you know, oh, yeah. I talk to one of my brothers and tell him, you know, we, I say, hey, I need you to be my, my accountability partner. We're going to check in every week and see how each other's doing. And then over time, it gets to, we start talking about everything else. And then after a while, we just assume the other person's doing okay. And we get familiar and we don't ask the tough questions anymore. Or we learn how to kind of play the system. Right. Like, I know you're going to ask me, did I look at this or did I do this? And, you know, as long as I know that you're going to ask that question that way, I can learn how to kind of weave in between it. But, um, man, one of the best questions I've heard on, on that note is what is the one question you're hoping I don't ask you today? I think that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the best question I think you can ever ask anyone if you're, if you're an accountability partner with them. Um, but uh, that's true. I think yeah. that we've gotten numb to that even to some extent is um, I think so. we're not challenging each other. We're not really digging in. Uh, we're just looking for the hour behaviors. It's it goes back. Sure. Do this and don't do this. As long as you're doing that, we're good. Right. We're not really searching the heart, like you said. Right. And that's and that all that's behavior modification. I just don't think that that. I think that it, that lasts for a certain amount of time. I think and that that's all about check-ins. And I think that that's what we we're really good at doing. I think that we've mastered the art of checking in, but we're not mastering the art of connection. And I think what accountability has to have is more than just a check-in, but it's actual connection. Like, how am I connecting with you? How are you connecting with me? How are you asking relevant questions that matter um, to where I'm at in life? And how am I being honest with you? And also, like, do you care? Like, do, do you know me? Like, so, like, one of the things that for me is there's two guys in my life right now. And as soon as COVID-19 hit and we were working from home, they called me up and they knew exactly. They're like, Israel, I know this has got to be pressing up against your fear buttons. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it kind of is. And they already knew. They know my story and they know where I'm going. They know where I'm from. They know where I'm at and they know where I want to go. And like those three, like, like they, they, those three, like almost like understandings about me, like really connect me to a person. Like this guy comes from this. Here's where he's at right now with his family. And here's where Israel really wants to go in life. Yeah. This COVID-19 is jacking with all of that. So let me call him, check in on him and encourage him. And then they really, it's not, how, how did you do today? Did you lie? Did you do that? Not a checklist. It's not a checklist. It's an actual, I care about you. I know you. And that's the thing about relationships and true authentic accountability is that it requires you to be relationally invested into another person. It's going to require you to take relational risks, putting yourself out there, making the deep, dark secrets of yourself known, and also sharing where you want to go in life. And it's, it's when you share that, then people can cheer you on adequately. It's when they can really like spot your weaknesses. It's, when they, it's, it's the guy in the corner that knows, that's honest enough to tell you where you're doing well and where you're dropping your guard. It's the people holding your ladder. It's the people holding the marathon sign saying, you can do this, you can finish this race. You've been training for three months for this. You're going to finish strong. Inserts, you know, wise analogy statement here like whatever that means for you for someone to be on your side cheering for you like you need that and it just can't be this empty cheering where they just have no idea who you are yeah like they just know you on the surface they really have to have some some grasp as to where you've been where you're at 
and where you're going. Well, I think, um, you know, when we were just uh, talking earlier, I, th I think it really comes down to um, if you're saying that pornography is the escape and we're trying to avoid the bad feelings, then, you know, what, what I've heard you say many times before is it, what are you going to replace it with? And so, um, yeah. you know, if, if it's your family and you, and you're, you feel like you're stuck at home, you can't go to work. And in the past you use your busyness and your job to kind of re replace that painful stuff. Then, you know, in this season, um, what can be the positive thing that, that is going to draw you out of this bad behavior, unwanted behavior. And so basically, I mean, it, for us with Mini United, we're constantly saying believe, belong, and lead. Those are our kind of our core values. Right. And we believe that the belong part is so important because yeah. it's in isolation. It's in that I have to figure this out by myself or mm -hmm. no one else is going to help me. No one else really cares about me. And so when you're talking about the accountability that you're talking about where someone's actually cares enough about you to get into your life. I mean, honestly, I think we all want that. Um, it just seems like it's so hard to find, you know, and, yeah. and how, do we, how do we build that in our life? And in, in this day and age, I mean, honestly, this is why I think getting plugged into a men's small group and getting plugged into the men's ministry is so important. Um, if you can, even if you're, even if it's online, just so you get some people that actually know you and you know them. And um, yeah. without that, man, it's, it's really tough to do this by yourself. You know, it is. I mean, we, we just, we weren't, we weren't really called to, we weren't designed or wired to, to do this alone. And, um, you know, again, I, I, I can't emphasize enough. I mean, it's going to take risk. And again, futility, the fear of, of futility strikes us there. The, you reaching out for a guy and trying to ask him and have that awkward conversation of, so can you and I take it to the next level? Like, you know, whatever that looks like, dude. I mean, if utility is going to strike you going, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, utility is going to strike you and be like, why are you, don't be vulnerable. He's going to think you're weak. Yeah. Like, it, this relationship won't go anywhere. And so immediately we back down. We're like, you know, I'll just, I'll just connect on a more surfacey level where I'm, I'm at least, I'm not isolated, but at least I'm doing what it looks like to be connected. Yeah. But I'm telling you again, that only takes us so far. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll settle for whatever we can get, though. So right. if men think that's – as, as deep as you can go, that's intimacy for men. They'll stop at sports. They'll stop at work. And because of the fear of rejection, they're not, they're not going to go any deeper. But talking about killing taboo, what if we could agree? What if we could start changing our culture as men? That we, we I mean, this, that's such a plan from the enemy, man. Yeah. If, if I can make you feel, question your sexuality, question your identity, uh, question whether or not that's a weakness for you to be vulnerable and tell people, you know, hey, man, Look, like you're funny, dude. I enjoy talking to you. Like we should, we should hang out some more. Right. Well, it's almost like men need permission, and we need to see even that model because we haven't had our fathers around to show us. Well, how do you even connect with other men? You know, how can, where's a place you can go to and have these safe conversations? And how long does it take you to get to a place where you feel safe and accepted enough to talk about? Hey, man, like yeah, masturbation's a, a struggle for me. Pornography's a, a struggle for me. I don't right. Say that on Facebook live or not but anyways but I know, <laughs> but we if, if you know we're definitely not talking about that in church and how can i get to a place where like you and i i love the fact that we can have conversations and talk about anything anything right and right. um and nothing you know nothing's off limits we know each other's heart we know yeah. even when we're joking and stuff like we, we know each other and how can we you know we need to break down all the garbage that keeps men from engaging that way um yeah so no, you're right. You're right. I mean, you know, it's, it's, and there's that scripture and I'll, it's Luke five nineteen, And I mean, I suggest, I suggest people, in fact, I'm going to, I'm just going to read it, man. Cause yeah. I believe, I believe in reading scripture out loud. And it, yeah. it, it just says, um, just then some of the men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, they tried to bring him inside to set him before Jesus, but they could not find a way through the crowd. So they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. And so when I start like, when I start, when I start like thinking about that, I think about a crew of people who really know this guy, who have made several attempts to get this guy in front of Jesus and they unsuccessfully couldn't do it. And so finally someone has this great idea to say, you know what, let's break the roof off of this place and lower our friend down and interrupt the greatest Messiah ever, the greatest teacher ever, interrupt him and lay him right before his feet. 
I mean, the, the, just the fact that this guy had such support, knowing his past, knowing where he was at right then and there, knowing his future, knowing where, his, where he wanted to go, they were relentless in not letting this guy just sit there and be paralyzed. And I mean, how many of us can say that we have those types of friendships right now? That they know us so well that they're willing to, to interrupt a teaching from Jesus and to lower us. Like, it's ropes. Like, nobody carries ropes with them. Like, someone had to go fetch ropes. I mean, someone had, I mean, this was a methodical plan. This was, this was it. I mean, you know, uh, and, and to have a group of people surrounding you, ensuring your success, reminding of you. And I can see the guy on the mat going, y'all just forget it. Like, just look, like we tried going through the front door. The crowds are too thick. Y- y'all just, you go, you go. And they're like, no, yeah. you're going to walk. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to walk out. We're going to carry you in, but you're going to walk out. Even if we got to break through this tile roof, we're going to make sure you walk out of here. And I'm saying is that what we need are real people that can come alongside us. Not checking off the list. How'd you do this week? I, how's that going? Did you lie about anything I said? Like, not that, like, really, like, dude, I know you. Yeah. I know where you want to go. And I'm here to remind you that all your work is going to end with fruit, good, long-lasting fruit, that this will not be a waste, but that everything you put into it will be productive, and it's going to be amazing. And I declare that. Like, I'm declaring that with you, and we're not going to quit. Like, that, that truth, like, we got to get into those squads. And honestly, dude, like, you're leading that up. You have, you have that now. You have people that are ready to just receive people who want that type, that level of relationship, of male camaraderie in their groups. And so everybody just has to be on board with that. Well, you have to be willing to get desperate, too. Like, yeah. you have to be so desperate, like a guy who's like, I'm paralyzed and I can't walk. You need to be as desperate as him and as desperate as his friends. Because those are usually the only guys that we actually see. We usually yeah. only see guys that are, that are desperate for something because their world's falling apart or because they feel, you know, the guys who aren't feeling the pain enough yet, man, they, they will continue to yes. just live with whatever. And, you know, people will live with a limp if they get yeah. used to it. You know, they'll, they'll just oh, yeah. adapt to it. And so they don't have a vision for more, and they just settle for, well, you know, this limp isn't so bad. I mean, honestly, I'm guilty of that. I, I injured my knee in 2009. My, uh, <laughs> my drunk cousin tackled me when I was still with the <laughs> club as soon as I'm walking. We all have the drunk. We all have the drunk cousin that tackles us. And I mean, I was so angry. I've been a bouncer, a football player, a Marine, never got hurt. And I'm walking into a bar and my cousin next to me tackles me. I tear something in my knee. And that was in 2009. Here we are 11 years later. And I still limp on stairs sometimes because I never, I learned how to live with it. Never went to a doctor to have it here. Yeah. It was like, ah, I'm not going to spend the money. It's going to be a lot of work and rehab. And so that, to me, is the greatest example of what we do as men. We're just like, you know what? It's a little painful, but for the most part, I can function. So this is good. I'm, you know, I'm comfortable enough. There's some days where I really feel the pain when it's raining outside. <laughs> but for the most part, this is normal. So it's okay. Yeah. 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 And, again, it goes back. And I think and even for me, like, and I, I had something similar. And for me, I, I just thought to myself, all the physical therapy I'm going to do, yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> like every time I work, like I, I, even now to this day, they're like, Israel, you should see a chiropractor for that. You know, in my head, I'm going, and my, my mouth goes, yeah, I'll do that. In my head, I'm going, I don't believe in that voodoo. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that ain't going to work. But I, it does. I, and I, just, I just think it's, there's, utility strike, there's utility striking at me in that moment, thinking that none of that's going to work. Yeah. And that's, that's a lie and that we need, I need an, an external voice, external voices telling me, no, Israel, it does work. You're headed someplace. Um, so I think for us, you know, we can keep saying guys getting groups, guys getting groups. And, yeah. and I absolutely agree. But, um, you know, a lot of guys on the call may be saying, well, listen, man, I did the men's group thing when I was younger or I've been in camaraderie and honestly, it wasn't a good experience for me. And, you know, to that <laughs> – what would you say? Yeah. Because I think we've all I mean, stories. I mean, I see a lot of, I mean, just because you come into a group, that you walking into the threshold of someone else's home or showing up on a Zoom meeting isn't automatically going to solve all your problems. Yeah. Like, you've got to engage. You've got to put in a little bit of effort. Again, this is not binging on Netflix. This is not pornography where it rewards you for just sitting down. 
Um, this is, you got to actually be involved, get connected. You got to share your stories. You got to be vulnerable. I mean, just because you get, you get a gym membership and you buy the little shaker bottle and you drive home, doesn't mean that all of a sudden you have a six pack. Like you've got, you've got to put some sweat into that place. You got to leave puddles of sweat. You got to put in time. You got to follow some sort of workout diary or journal. Yeah. Uh, you got to eat right. It's holistic. And it's the same thing. And I tell guys, give it, I, I tell guys this, even when they come into my specialized small groups, I tell them, it's like, look, the first thing you're going to do is think that this isn't working. Guess what? I, I don't want to have that conversation until at least six weeks. Yeah. In, six to three, in six weeks to three months, let's talk about how, we, how you're doing with this. But for the first three times that you go and you don't feel connected, I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way. Well, I mean, let's make it really practical then for everybody watching. Um, whether you are on, you know, whether you're like, hey, I'm good, or, you, or this applies directly to you. If you're not in a men's group, you know, unless you're in a group with your wife, um, here's the thing about being in a group with your wife. That's incredible, and I think you should. But even yeah. in those groups, you need to have times where you separate and you're just with the guys. Um, and I get it. It's scary. You know, there needs to be a safe place where you can talk. But, um, man, get in a men's group and give it six weeks to Israel. Six weeks to Israel's point. Like, yeah. Unless it's just absolutely, listen, there is no way I can talk to these guys. Then try yeah. another group and give them six weeks. But don't just say, tried it twice, didn't work, throw it out. Like, listen, man, the easiest thing for you to do is to walk away from here and continue doing life the way you've been doing it. <laughs> and yeah. so what we're challenging you is to make some waves and do something different. Get some accountability in your life. But not just to say I have accountability. Like, get some, really what we mean is get some brothers in your life. Like, yeah. Get some men that are really going to talk about something that actually matters and not just, yeah. the, you know, we don't even have sports right now. So there's nothing that, you know, you can't, there's an excuse to not stay shallow. You can actually go deep and say, hey, man, so how are you really doing? How are the finances? How's the family? Yeah. How's your mind? How's your heart? You know, um, and we would challenge every guy on here to do that. And for the guys who've been in church forever, you know, playing the game um, or you just have it down and you feel like, oh, I can't do that. I'm beyond that. Um, I should know better and, and all that. Man, Jesus came and he, he like basically butchered the religious folks. He was all over about the fact that they knew all the rules and all that and they were dead inside. And so for those of us, man, the professional churchgoers, the, the ministry leaders and all that, man, we, we, I think we have to be even extra careful um, because we are really challenged and tempted to be fake and just to say everything's good when it's not. The guys who are new to this, man, I, I, I'm much more comfortable talking to a man in a bar, to be honest, because he will shoot so straight with me about what's going on in his life. He'll, he, no holds barred, man. He will say right. anything to me. I come yeah. into a church, and it, you have to dig deep to find out what guys are really going yeah, through. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's so true. And I mean, and I think it just takes some training. I think, you know, it's easy to talk about it. We, we've only got a few minutes to share that. But, yeah. you know, actual, having actual connection versus check-ins you know, that's hard. I mean, that's a new language for a lot of men. It just takes some time to understand, like, what does that look like? And how do I do it? Like, walk me through that. And, you know, one, one of the, I think, you know, one of the things that you can, you can simply say and have and work into a conversation is, hey, man, um, tell me about one of your greatest setbacks. Tell me about one of your greatest comebacks. And also just where do you want to go? Like, where do you feel, where do you feel God is calling you? Yeah, what personal goal do you want to achieve? Yeah. Um, either tomorrow or the next five years, just one thing you want to achieve. I think it's a great way. Those questions are a great way to establish. And they're very encouraging. I mean, who doesn't like a comeback story? Um, and so I think that we all need to hear that. And we all have them. And we're all digging for them. I mean, if we want to hear them so bad, we watch these movies about these pathetic football teams that are just, you know, they're, they're poor and broke and they don't have a good coach. And all of a sudden someone comes in and teaches them and then they win the championship. Yeah. We, we love a comeback story. Yeah. And so we can find that amongst our community. It's just a matter of putting yourself out there and taking that risk um, to relationally engage um, and understanding what it really means to have that, um, that connection. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the word, the two words that men dread, but I, I don't care. I don't care who you are, how macho you are, but we all long for male intimacy. Yeah, and ma ma real male camaraderie, intimacy, yeah. connection. We long for it, um, and we're not the same without it. And our culture tries to distort that and d destroy it, so that men, you know, rather than risk being labeled as something or becoming something they don't want it to be, they'll just mm -hmm. avoid it altogether. Absolutely, and that comes down to every relationship in our lives. And so, man, the enemy's done a number on us, man. He shut down 
men's ability to really connect in relationships period with, with their wives at times their children and with their brothers. And, um, we really want to, re we want to retake that, restore that, see that redeemed, um, because we need it. And if you've ever had it, uh, there is, you never want to go back to, to living without it. Right. And so, um, man, as we're wrapping up, let's just say, let's put, you know, 30, 40 seconds on the shot clock as far as, uh, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are some closing thoughts you want to leave the guys with or, or where they can go from here? Um, I would I would just say I, I would I would say that when it comes to pornography, when it comes to um, unwanted behaviors um, or any form of sexual brokenness, the underlying cause of that is relational brokenness. Mm -hmm. So if that's the if that's the problem, the true problem at the root, the antidote is number one Jesus and healthy relationships with others, and so. What instead of looking at our behavior and trying to white knuckle and just stop the behavior, let's go to the root, invite God into the problem, and invite others to long suffer with us, invite others to join us and to help us carry the burden. And eventually, the behavior I believe will take care of itself. That's good, man. Um I, I keep, I think the one thing, and maybe I'm just bent this way, um, but maybe it's just from what I see in my own life. If I'm running away from pain, I'm probably screwing up. Oh yeah. If I'm trying to avoid suffering and sacrifice and pain, I'm probably screwing up. So uh, yeah. the most manly thing we can do at times is uh, learning how to suffer the right way for the right. right reasons. You know, I don't mean suffer as far as isolation, suffer with right. the like actually learning how to endure the the, the good kind of pain, the, the pain yeah, absolutely, pain and the pain of discomfort, and and learning how to you know handle silence and solitude at times, but learning how to also push yourself right. into uh, interaction with others. So, yeah, yeah, man. And actually, and I'll be honest with you, and we can end on this. Maybe it's something we talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear what people say, but uh, there, you know, when we don't give in to the desires of the flesh, when we don't run to our unwanted behaviors as a result of pain. We have to face the pain. And so what keeps us from facing the pain, that good pain that you're talking about, is our inability to tolerate discomfort. Yeah. And so there are techniques called discomfort tolerance that oh, every man needs to start to understand and equip himself with. Let's put and so we lack that. <laughs> I, yeah. I definitely want to get into that because I think that's just something that every area of our life that needs to improve it's, it's learning how to face the discomfort, whether that's working out or, you know, learning how to pray with your wife or yeah. being in, in relationships with and, and experiencing community and brotherhood. So, yeah. uh, man, well, if you guys, if you guys are liking what we're putting down, man, we'd love for you to like, like the Men United page, um, at, you know, join the Men United group, be part of these conversations during the week. In the group, we have a lot of conversations where we're just commenting and we want to hear from you, hear things that are relevant to you and, and if you're watching this video later on, man, uh, feel free to comment. We'll come back in and respond to you later on or yeah. ministry will. And, um, and if you are isolated and, you, and, you, and you're sick of it, man, uh, go to victoryatl.com and find a men's small group and get plugged in, get connected and, and start living your life differently than you have. So, um, man, we love you guys, whether we've ever met you or not, we love you because you're our brothers and um, we have experienced, we have been where you are and at different yeah. times and we can relate to whatever it is you're going through in some degree or fashion you may not believe us but i promise you we can one of us can relate to whatever you're going through in some form or absolutely fashion. absolutely even if it's not the two of us on the screen uh just the leaders and stuff here <laughs> yeah but uh anyway man um guys thanks for joining us let me just pray for you real quick and then uh we will hopefully see you guys next week we're back here in the morning with um with a bible study i think uh octavius Walton from our Midtown campus is going to be leading that at 6 a.m. So y'all let me know how that is. I got to make myself get up earlier tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Father, I thank you for my brothers. I thank you for conversations like this where we just get to uh, just talk from the heart, talk about what's in our mind, um, even though it's, it's just a conversation. And for some people that this may be a weird thing to watch. But um, for me, it's, it's in a lot of ways, it's better than a sermon because uh, Father, we're just talking through what you're doing in our heart and what you're doing in our lives. And so I pray that you would help us 
to speak in words that people can hear. And even if we said the wrong words or we didn't say enough, that you would, you would take that as a seed and you would finish that work in the men's hearts that are listening. So bless their conversations, bless their thoughts, protect their minds, protect their purity and their decisions, give them the strength they need to make better decisions and to start shifting and changing behavior and to make them desperate for a new way of living. Um, so God, we give you all the glory for this. We thank you for all that you're doing and it's all for Jesus. In his name, amen. Amen. All right, brother. I'll catch you later. All right, man. We'll see you.